Hey everybody and welcome back to some more Project Ozone Light. We're back. Last episode, we were working on trying to further automate our sifting system, which has uh, gotten a little bit backed up since the end of last episode. We're going to do some work on that uh, in today's episode. Uh, but we're also working on setting up and expanding our storage drawer system to include all of the ingots, as well as to include all of the drops that we get from our sifting setup. And since the end of the last episode, I've expanded it out just a little bit uh, to include some more stuff that we kind of had in abundance like these mangler blocks like the stuff that we get from our mob spawner and also uh, the stuff that we had originally in the larger storage drawers over here i've got rid of those and everything is now connected in the one storage draw system i also moved the cobblestone generator you'll notice that we now have our tier 2 generator over here as opposed to over there uh, between our tinker's construct stuff um, again just wanted to be connected in the system and also uh, be pumping into a compacting drawer as opposed to pumping into a normal drawer because the compacting drawer allows us to automatically pull out single or double compressed cobblestone the double compressed cobblestone might not be all that useful but, but the single compressed cobblestone is quite useful in that it allows us to not have to craft the compressed cobblestone whenever we want to get compressed gravel or compressed sand or dust uh, all that kind of stuff it just saves us um, an extra kind of part in the crafting chain which is quite nice uh, also between episodes i have made another sag mill and another alloy smelter because we were starting to use these more and more and i don't really like having to break this setup that we've got over here every time i need to smelt some thing make an alloy or pulverize something in the sag mill uh, and so i've made a new setup over here with the solar panels and so these are just here for whenever we need to uh, pulverize something or smelt something which i'm fairly certain we will have to do at some point in today's episode uh, so the first thing that i want to work on is this because um i don't know why uh, my base isn't trunk loaded at least as far as i know but for some reason the sifting system has just kept on going uh, even while i've been offline and when i came back on this morning all of my storage drawers or at least some of my storage drawers that pick up some of the stuff that we get from sifting are quite full for example if we look at this top left slot over here you'll notice that we have 512 coal 512 lapis which by the way is the max in these two by two storage drawers it means in total they can store 2048 of four different items but 512 of each individual item and so what's happening now is the coal and the lapis and the flint can't go anywhere and so it's just kind of sitting on the floor and to fix that uh, we have two options one we can upgrade our storage drawer to hold more stuff but that's just going to push the problem down the road the other option is to install what is known as a void upgrade this is going to destroy excess items so that even when the storage drawer fills up it doesn't start backing up and throwing items all over the place causing a bunch of lag for me and also for the rest of the server uh, and so what I'm going to do is both. I'm going to put in some void upgrades over here to make sure that if we do end up in the situation again, that all of the excess items get thrown away. But I'm also going to make a couple of storage upgrades so that we can store more than 512 of each item because I can foresee us needing more than 512 coal, for example, uh, in the future. So um, thankfully, the void upgrade is quite easy. In other packs, I've seen it require an ender pearl. Thankfully, in this pack, it is just one upgrade template, which is just sticks and a basic draw, as well as six more sticks and then two obsidian. So mostly a lot of wood um, and thankfully we do have a boat ton of obsidian in our storage drawer and so uh, if we just grab our sticks which i think we do still have in here we do uh, also i'm gonna kill this guy real quick i don't have my ugh, i don't have my enderman charm on which i really should be carrying around with me pretty much at all times because they are all over the place they're constantly teleporting out of the, uh, the little storage box we've got them in pretty much at all times because they're constantly teleporting out of the mob box and just walking around the area uh, so we'll try and keep that on us but anyway now that we've got ourselves some sticks and some obsidian we should be able to fairly easily uh, make a few of these all we need is some basic storage drawers which uh, we should now have in abundance because uh, we did take down quite a few of them in the last episode the question is where did i put them all they're all there okay so we'll take those we'll head on back over uh, there is a loot bag on the floor there speaking of which i did do uh, quite a bit of mob killing between episodes uh, now how many of these do i want i want one for this draw and realistically we kind of want one on this draw you'll notice that it has put lapis in a second draw here uh, because it ran out of space and so we do have over a thousand lapis uh, just over the span of two different draws and so i'd like to get that one um, out of there and over into here but uh, for now let's make uh, some more sticks and then once we've got those i think i'm just going to make maybe three of these um i do want to save the rest of the upgrade templates so that we can actually upgrade this to increase its capacity uh, but what we'll do is we'll put you in like so you can just right click with this or you can uh, shift right click to open up the gui and then you can put them in the bottom like so this is also how you take them out if you want to get them out earlier uh, but i also want to put one downstairs in this storage drawer because i have to assume uh, yeah that this one is filling up pretty quickly 
quickly and eventually he's probably going to back up the whole system uh, if it can't hold any more flint. Um, and I can't really foresee us needing more than 2048 at any point in the near future. Uh, anything good? Uh, we've got a rail, an enchanted book, an arrow, and four bones. So speaking of loot bags, I did do quite a bit of mob killing over here between episodes, and I'm going to turn those hostile creatures right down because they're way too loud. Uh, but what you can do, for those who don't know, with loot bags is you can shift right click onto a chest and it will empty that loot bag into the chest if there is space in the chest. You'll notice here it took everything but the four bones. That is because the chest is full because between episodes I have opened quite a few loot bags and gotten quite a lot of stuff. Uh, but the main thing that I was after, I guess the sword is actually quite nice, but the main thing that I was after uh, was the ender pearls because the ender pearls are going to allow us to automate the production of dust, which is something that I want to do in today's episode so that we can start sifting it, getting ourselves some more redstone. You'll notice that we've got more diamonds than redstone at this point, which is not a situation uh, that I really want to be in. Um, and so before we get into the sifting of dust, I do very quickly uh, want to make a couple of draw upgrades. These start at obsidian and work all the way up to emerald. The obsidian upgrade uh, increases the storage by two times the base value. And so all of the little slots uh, should be able to hold 1024 of each individual item. And again, uh, they're fairly easy to make, just requiring some obsidian. Uh, I believe you do require the previous tier to make the next tier. Um, or we don't, so we can make the iron version Actually, then, in that case, I always get that confused. I always think that you have to have the previous tier to make the next tier. But if we don't, then we might as well go straight in with emeralds, seeing as we've got 153 of them already in the storage drawer. And I don't really think we're going to need that many of them uh, in the near future. And so if we just make two of those for now, and we put one in here and then one, I guess, in... Here, and you know what, we'll make another one real quick for the redstone, the glowstone, and uh, the blaze powder, and the nether quartz dust. It's not really filling up just yet, but um, it is one that should start filling up pretty quickly once we get our automated dust up and running. And so now, uh, we should be able to hold quite a lot in each and every one of these storage drawers. If I quickly uh, run that through on a calculator, we can hold up to 6,656 of each one of these items in each little square. So we should be good uh, for quite a while now. And again, we do now have that little safety net in place so that if they do fill up, uh, then it'll automatically just delete any excess items and it won't cause any lag or anything like that, which is pretty cool. Uh, we should probably also make one for this draw, but I'll do that in the future. For now, I would like to start working on automating the process of creating dust and then also sifting the dust. So we've already got the mechanical user here ready and waiting to receive the dust to sift, but to make the dust is a little tricky because in previous skyblocks, the way that this would work is you would pulverize cobblestone into gravel, gravel into sand, and then you would pulverize sand into dust. However, in this mod pack, you cannot put sand in the sand mill without getting silicon. Now, if I put sand into here like this, it's going to go through and we have a 50 percent chance of getting silicon i did make quite a bit of silicon between episodes uh, i put in a stack of compressed sand the reason why i did that is because we need some more of these redstone alloys because in order to automate the production of dust we are going to need two more mechanical users so uh, first things first let me get rid of all of this coal and actually before we get into this i'm getting distracted over and over again but there is another thing that i would like to test here so right now we've got a draw controller but it's all the way over here and i would like to be able to easily deposit all of the stuff in my inventory entry into the correct storage drawer without having to go through and one by one double right click on every single drawer that has that specific item in it now the way that we do that is with the draw controller and as far as i know you can't have two draw controllers in one system but what i think we can do is take this guy here the controller slave that we made earlier and put it over here because if i'm not mistaken uh, which i might be i haven't played with the uh, the controller slave before but i think the controller slave acts like the controller in that it can receive items but doesn't allow you to do the double click to deposit and so i think if i put my controller slave here that should be able to receive all of the ingots coming from the alloy smelter and also receive all of the items uh, coming from the advanced item collector which again uh, we do have to bump up the radius of to make sure that it can collect everything that's around here uh, but i think that should work Although the fact that that stuff is still on the floor is kind of making me think that it doesn't. Although I have noticed that the iron here is not going anywhere. And I think that that is because the compacting draw for iron is full. Yeah, we've got 1,024 blocks worth of iron, which I think is the maximum. And so let me quickly grab um, a couple more emeralds here real quick and see about making ourselves another one of these guys. And then just doing something like this. Kapow. That should allow all of this iron to get pulled on out through and into the system although uh, oh it's not working because i don't have a controller down i don't think so if i get rid of for example 
this one for the time being. And I put my controller right here. Hopefully the controller slave will connect to the system and start to put everything where it belongs. So let's not forget to lock that up again to make sure the items don't go anywhere. And is that working? Those are not being picked up. The iron has gone through, which is good. Hopefully we've got more than 1,024. We do. We've now got 1,025 blocks. Uh, but for whatever reason, these items are still not being picked up. But it is only two specific ones. It looks like gold and maybe tin. And so I'm assuming that all that's happening here is these are full. That's your lorry. And which one is gold? Gold is at 104 pieces. Um, and so I think I should still be able to pick all that stuff up. Uh, I'm not quite sure why it wouldn't be able to. Uh, let me try real quick. If I drop down some iron, does that iron get picked up? It does. And does it end up back over in the compacting drawer? It does. We've now got 1,026 blocks worth. So this should work. I'm not quite sure why it's not picking up uh, the gold ore pieces or the osmium ore pieces. I really feel like it should be doing that. I'm going to pick these ones up manually, but then I'm hoping that all of the rest of those get pulled in yeah for some reason it's not pulling in the gold oh are these the last ones ah okay so i think what's happening here is that the gold and the osmium are too far away from the slave because the slave doesn't quite have the same reach as the actual controller and so i think all we need to do here is get rid of both of these and basically just move them uh, to be a little bit closer and so if i can get rid of both of these without destroying my base that would be swell there we go good stuff and then if we put down uh, these again for now i think just like uh here and here should work out just fine we'll put gold in one and osmium in the other as always give them a quick lock with the draw key and that should now hopefully uh yeah be picking everything up nice okay so it was just a distance thing uh, it looks like the controller slave cannot go more than five blocks uh, in any direction but this does now give us easy access uh, to our draw controller which means uh, that no matter how much stuff we pull out we can very easily deposit it all back in by simply double right clicking on the draw controller which is pretty nice so now that that is taken care of let's get on to automating the production and and sifting of dust so to do that uh, the first thing that we're going to need to do is grab all of these blocks of silver that we picked up earlier um, and head on over to our crafting table to make two more mechanical users so for this we need two more resonating redstone crystals, which of course need these redstone alloys, which we already have. I made them between episodes as well as one ender shard. The ender shard is reusable, I think eight times once you've made it. And so we should still have a few more in our chest here. We do indeed. Let us go ahead and craft up two of those. And then all we need after that is, I think, two pieces of redstone and some cobblestone to make the droppers. And then after we've got both of those, we just need two levers, which we should be able to do fairly easily. And kapow, we have ourselves two more mechanical users. So the idea here is that we're going to have one mechanical user place down the sand and then another mechanical user using a hammer to automatically break that sand down into dust. So for example, uh, let me quickly grab a little bit of sand. Also, let me quickly eat some applesauce here so that we can continue moving at a nice quick speed uh, let me quickly grab some compressed cobblestone out of here uh, we don't need a whole lot and then if we break that down into gravel and again into sand what we should be able to do is we should be able to tell one of the mechanical users here to right click uh, with block generic right click i don't know if that's going to place it down right there i think we might have to have uh, some cobblestone to give it something to right click on potentially uh let me check that real quick do you know click right click uh, oh no i think there's one for place block right place block so we only want to place the block we might not need that cobblestone uh let me give this a try real quick if i pick that up and put it back in here does that place it down it does okay good stuff and then in this one we're going to set it to use item on block which is the one we've just passed as well as left click and uh, you'll see just there it did it without any items in its slots um i'm also going to say use upper left slot only for now um, and so it's going to use the hammer on the sand like so and that's going to get us nine dust nice now we just need to automate that to make it a little bit quicker so uh, the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to set up another sag mill that i made between episodes and so i think what we're gonna have to do is grab our cobblestone generator i made another one of these uh, between episodes as well and let's put this down like right about there so this is going to take cobblestone and just like this sag mill it's going to turn that cobblestone into gravel and sand now what we want to do here is we want to have all of the sand be pulled out of the sag mill but all of the gravel that's produced we want to be sent back into another sag mill and so for now i'm just going to quickly grab this sag mill right here i'll make another one in just a second once i've uh, got this all set up so what we're going to do is i think we're going to have to have 
a bunch of item ducts here because I could put this next to it, but then it would pull all of the sand as well, and I don't want it uh, pulverizing all of the sand. Instead, what I would like is I would like uh, some item conduits, one here, uh, to pull out all of the gravel and only gravel. So whitelist, gravel, and extract without a redstone signal. That should pull all of the gravel out of the first sag mill and put it into the second sag mill. At least that's the idea. There we go. And then following that, we would have another item duct pull the sand out of the second sag mill over and into the mechanical user. Um, now, this would work. You know, it would pull the items out of there, put it into here like so, put the sand down, break it into dust, and the system kind of works. But I think we could be a bit more efficient, especially seeing as we're going to have to keep replacing the hammer in here. Um, having it break one piece of sand with each piece of durability seems like a bit of a waste. I think it would be much more efficient to have it break compressed sand. Now, to do that, we would have to first craft the sand before we put it into the mechanical user. Thankfully, I believe this is going to be fairly easy for us to do with the crafter here, uh, the analog crafter from X Utilities 2. Really easy to make. It's one crafting table, one chest, and one lever. So essentially, uh, just just all wood uh, and so we'll take you we will make ourselves another chest like so and then finally we will get a lever like that and then craft all of those together and we get an analog crafter now i'm also going to craft up a quick hopper here i think i do have some spare chests lying around i do indeed let's do one two three four five and then get a standard Minecraft hopper like so. And essentially, the way that I'm going to have this work is we're going to have all of the sand go from the second sag mill and also uh, from the first sag mill because it does occasionally produce a little bit of sand, send it around into the crafter like so, and inside of the crafter what you can do is you can specify uh, how you want it to craft in this left slot and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put in a couple of pieces of sand we are going to need a few more to get this going uh, but we're going to do something like this we're going to enable sticky and that means it's going to keep at least one item you'll see there we did craft that sand into some compressed sand that sand then got sent down through the hopper into the user and then got hammered and you'll see we have nine uh, compressed dust right there so what i'm going to do real quick is just break this and instead, we're going to turn on sticky, which means that it's always going to keep at least one piece of sand in each slot to make sure that it never comes out and nothing wrong ever ends up in that slot. Uh, you'll see it's not crafting now. And we're also going to turn on spread items. When each piece of sand comes in, it's going to be evenly distributed among all nine slots. Uh, if you turn this off, it will start by filling up the first slot and then move on to the second slot, which is not what we want. We want the sand to come in and we want it to put one piece in here and then in here and here and here and so on and so forth. And so turning on spread items and we put this in, uh, it should automatically even out the items until it can craft a piece of compressed sand and then of course we can put the hopper back down like so that's going to pump it into the mechanical user which will place it down and then it will get broken now the final piece of the puzzle here apart from all of the uh, item conduits that we still need to make uh, i think i'm just going to put down another advanced item collector maybe uh, on this guy right here the only problem with that i think is that it's going to cause an issue with it also picking up the stuff from the higher level and so i think what i might have to do instead is kind of encase this system and so when the sand get breaks it stays in here but then also have a hopper underneath to collect all of the dust and then pipe that round back up and to the mechanical user and so uh, what i'm going to do guys real quick i'm going to go away i'm going to do a little bit of testing i'm going to get some more item ducts i'm going to route all of the items to where i believe they need to go uh, i'm also going to play around and see if i can't get this to work and get all the dust into the mechanical user as efficiently as possible and i'll be back in a second Okay, so not too long later, and I believe we have a setup that works. It's not the best looker in the world. It's a little bit messy, but I think it should work just fine. So we have all of our cobblestone coming from the cobblestone generator going into the sag mill above it. That is then turned into gravel and sand. Some of the sand is pulled out from the back and sent right on round to the analog crafter to be turned into compressed sand. The gravel is sent down and through into the sag mill where it is then pulverized into sand as well as a little bit of flint which is placed down into a basic draw beneath it. We'll get to that in just a second. All of the rest of the sand is pulled out through connected to the same line and goes on into the analog crafter. After. That analog crafter then crafts the sand into compressed sand, which is sent down through the hopper into the mechanical user, which places it down. The other mechanical user with the hammer breaks it. Uh, there is then just a very awkward piece of glass here to stop it flying out in the wrong direction. All of the dust that is made goes down into the hopper and through into the basic drawer. And the final piece of the puzzle here is our server, which if we put on and set to ignore redstone, should begin to pump dust up and into the mechanical user. And we have an automated dust creation and sifting system now it's not 
the fastest in the world, um, mostly because of the item ducts, which I think we do want to replace as soon as we can with item conduits from Ender.io. Those are going to be much faster, but uh, are a little bit more expensive if I can find them here on the list. There they are. Uh, they require pulsating iron, uh, which is made from iron and ender pearls in the alloy smelter. Right now, we don't have an automated mob system, and so getting a bunch of ender pearls to make these is not really that easy to do, but for now, the system works and is fully set up. And one thing that I have changed over here with this sag mill and this storage drawer that I didn't do over here with this basic storage drawer is set it up to push and pull. Because uh, for those who don't know, if I grab a piece of flint real quick and hover over it uh, and press shift, you'll see at the bottom there it says sag mill grinding ball. Main output 120%, bonus output 125%, power reduction 15%. And so what you can do is you can put flint into this slot here on the right and it will increase increase the odds of getting the primary and secondary output and at the same time reduce the amount of power required to run the sag mill. Pretty great. So all we have to do is set the bottom to both push and pull. And just like the name suggests, what that's going to do is it's going to push all of the flint out through the bottom. And then when it needs it, it's going to pull it back in to the slot right there. Uh, and so all we have to do over here is the exact same thing on the right. We can push and pull uh, the flint simultaneously. We do have to make sure that we lock the storage drawers just in case now we end up running out of flint, which is still unlikely. Uh, I think we're still producing more flint than we're actually using. But just on the off chance that these storage drawers end up empty, they can end up putting like sand in there or gravel in there. And then the whole system ends up backed up. But we do now have a fully automated dust creation system and as you can see up here the dust is being sifted giving us a nice infinite supply of a bunch of stuff but most importantly of course we are after that redstone uh, now it does look like we don't have enough space in our bone meal drawer uh, yes we were at 512 bone meal which is not where we want to be thankfully uh, we can very easily of course go ahead and make ourselves another emerald upgrade which should take care of that nice and easily uh, so we'll just throw you in like so, and that should begin to pick up all the bone meal it has. Nice. So now that that is taken care of, um, we have a fully automated system that produces gravel, sand, and dust and sifts all three. We don't sift that much sand. Uh, we might at some point create another third set of sieves uh, that will also sift sand specifically. Uh, but for the time being, we've, we are sifting all three of them, albeit sand less so than the rest of them. And then they are automatically being collected. The ores are being processed and everything else is being placed into a storage drawer, which should be able to hold it for quite a long time to come. Uh, now, speaking of storage, we do still have quite a lot of stuff over in these storage drawers and I'm not really a huge fan of having to walk backwards and forwards every time I want to get something out of one of these chests in order to use it uh, in my crafting table and so what I would also like to make in today's episode is a larger chest. Thankfully we do have the iron chest mod installed and so we can go all the way up to a diamond chest which I think we should be able to make fairly easily given that we've got over 100 almost 150 diamonds in our storage drawer now unlike with the storage drawer upgrades with the iron chest mod you do have to go through and make each and every chest in the chain uh, and so we've started with the iron chest next up on the list is the gold chest uh, which need eight golden ingots and then surround the iron chest with gold like so and then after that to make the diamond chest we just need two diamonds six glass and a gold chest which of course we already have i believe we've already got some glass in here we do uh we'll just take six because i don't want my inventory to get any more full than it needs to be also i'm a fool because we already had 20 glass on us but nevertheless that is going to get us our first diamond chest which uh, if we throw it down i think for now like right here uh, it doesn't look great but it is massive significantly bigger than the standard double chest that we've seen before and so let me just quickly dump what i have in my inventory out so that i can get rid of of all of this stuff and we should be able to hopefully condense most of these chests over and into our diamond chest as we go uh, i will do a quick double click on the storage drawer just in case uh, there are any items in these chests that shouldn't be in here and should really belong uh, inside of our storage drawer system i already saw one i noticed we had some inferior dust in that chest yeah it's right there uh, and so that should end up inside of our storage drawer system freeing up a little bit of space uh, i don't think we're quite going to get everything uh, into here unfortunately oh i don't know we might do we might be able to get all of this in i'm not quite sure not quite we're missing a few items but uh, a couple of these things i do want to keep on me at all time for example our enderman charm our diamond chest plate i'll keep the enderman sword on it doesn't have quite as much attack damage as our hatchet does but it does have a better chance of getting ender pearls and also i believe a better chance of getting mob heads yeah you can see increased skull and ender pearl drops so that's always nice to have um, and there we go we don't need those nether stars and so i don't really know why we're keeping them i'm kind of hoping we can get the emc value from them but uh, i'm not entirely convinced i'm just gonna throw this obsidian off the side for now because we've got 2048 in here and i don't really want to back up space that we don't need um and 
And yeah, so now we can get rid of all of these chests and just use the one diamond chest that we have next to us for all of our storage, at least for the time being, until we get a better form of storage. Speaking of which, uh, the next thing that I would like to work on is a little bit of applied energistics. So uh, if we open up the quest book here, which we haven't done in quite some time, the next thing that I would like to work towards getting are the pressers from applied energistics. Now to get these, uh, we do have to take a step back and go up to agricultural revolution uh, because if I show you the recipe here for the pressers, uh, you'll notice that they are made using some Certus Quartz Essence from Mystical Agriculture, as well as a pure Certus Quartz Crystal in the case of the Calculation Press, uh, a Diamond in the case of the Engineering Press, and then a Gold in the case of the Logic Press, and finally, Silicon in the case of the Silicon Press. Normally, you would find these in Meteors around the world, but as we are in a Skyblock, we cannot do that, and so a custom recipe has been added, and we need to get ourselves Certus Quartz Essence, which you can get by growing Certus Quartz Seeds. Now, uh, to get these, we have to start by getting ourselves some of these guys over here, the Inferium Crafting Seeds, which are kind of the base seeds for getting started with Mystical Agriculture. I guess after um, the Shard Seeds, I cannot quite remember the name of those. What are they called? They are called Berity Shards. Okay, so... Uh, first things first, let us make the watering can from X Utilities 2. This is going to make it a lot easier and a lot quicker for us to start growing our magical crops, uh, aka mystical agricultural crops. I might keep calling them magical crops because that was the name of the mod that this is replacing. Um, and if I do, I'm talking about mystical agriculture crops. Um, and so let's have a look here. Watering can to make this we need th four iron and a bucket really easy stuff i'm fairly certain we've got like three buckets we've got six buckets already lying around and so one two three and four boom and boom nice so uh, unlike in previous minecraft versions where the watering can was kind of you fill it up once and it lasts forever in the newer version you do have to fill it up like consistently you have to keep filling it up over and over and over again so you'll see right now as i right click on my unlimited water source uh, the green bar there at the bottom is filling up until it's fully full and now if i hold down right click it is throwing out some water but it is also using up the water that we just collected from our unlimited water source and so uh, it's a little tedious but at the same time i guess a little bit more balanced because this thing does definitely increase the speed at which we can grow these seeds uh, that did also complete a quest so let's go ahead and claim the middle loot box something we haven't done in quite some time getting ourselves another growth crystal uh, slow growth works in a nine by nine farm uh, checks up to two blocks up or down so hopefully it says slow growth i'm really hoping that it speeds up growth because we have two of these um, and having those speed up our growth would be quite nice but if it does slow them down i guess we might just not use them um, and now we need to get four prosperity shards to get those prosperity shards we have to sift some crushed netherrack i believe uh, let me see if i can find them here uh, yes we have to save crushed netherrack crushed netherrack is made you guessed it by crushing netherrack with a hammer and so we should be able here to very quickly uh, head on through to the nether Uh, grab ourselves just a little bit of netherrack that will do just fine i broke my carbon pickaxe we mined that much netherrack that's fine uh, we could always go ahead and repair it i think we did get some carbon uh, from some loot banks i'm not quite sure i'm assuming i can just repair this in my tool station also we desperately need to eat some more of our apple sauce do we have any on me i don't i put it all in my chest let me quickly creep on over here as i die of starvation where is my Apple sauce, it is... Are we out of apple sauce? We could be. In that case, let me quickly go and uh, grab a couple of apples from the tree. And our pot, I believe, should still be in that diamond chest that we just threw down. So let me quickly go uh, grab that and whip up some last minute apple sauce here. Oh, there we go. Good stuff. Okay, so we'll throw that back into there. And I think I do have at least one piece of carbon in here. Yeah, we've got two pieces of raw carbon. I'm not quite sure how many it's going to take to repair it, but I'm assuming that what we can do is in our uh, tool station, we should be able to just put you in the middle and then you on the outside. Yeah, it did take two to fill it up, but that's fine. Um, so now that we've got way too much netherrack, let me empty out uh, this drawer that is full of lapis to make room uh, for all of the netherrack. Also, where is my drawer key? That's another thing uh, that I want to keep on me at all times. And so we'll quickly empty this out and then fill it up with netherrack. We are going to have to upgrade that to store more netherrack in just a second here. But for now, uh, let me throw down quite a bit. I'm fairly certain I had a wand. I do indeed. Um, my hammer is busy downstairs breaking all of my dust. That is the only downside to the system. It's not fully automated simply because of the fact that we do have to keep replacing uh, the iron hammer or whatever kind of hammer we put into here. 
Uh, what we could do is leave it on random slot as opposed to first slot and then just fill this up with like diamond hammers and, uh, and hopefully that would last quite a while. Eventually, uh, once we get uh, a good applied energistic system set up, we can auto craft the hammers and have them automatically sent down uh, to the mechanical user. Uh, but anyway, we're getting sidetracked here. Let me get uh, two sticks as well as for now, I think two iron, make ourselves another iron hammer like so and get to work crushing a couple of pieces of this netherrack. And not too long later, we've now got over two stacks of crushed netherrack. And so guys, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go away again. Uh, I'm gonna quickly do some manual sifting. I'm gonna hijack these real quick to do some manual sifting of the crushed netherrack until we get four of these prosperity shards, which actually I don't even think I'm gonna have to go away for because it shouldn't take us more than a couple of uh, sifts here to get uh, the four that we need. I am gonna very quickly just finish up uh, the last couple that we have here because we can sift through them so quickly in our five by five sifting area here and we are done nice so we did get a couple of ore pieces as well there that we don't actually um have space for just yet uh, i believe we all have got cobalt ardite and mithril uh, which i believe also does complete a quest for us i think if we head on back over uh, to the first page uh did we not complete this quest oh we need to craft them into pieces and so if i do this if i do oh, we don't quite have enough in the way of ardite i don't think we've got enough uh, cobalt on we done. That's Mithril. Let me craft up the Cobalt. We need to do quite a bit more sifting, I guess, to get the three uh, Cobalt Ore Chunks and three Ardite Ore Chunks required for that quest. But a quest that we did complete is the Prosperity Shard quest. And so again, let us claim a loot box. Hopefully get something good out of it. Five pulsating iron is actually really nice. It's going to allow us to make those uh, item conduits from Ender.io without having to spend our own Ender pearls, which is quite nice indeed. But uh, now that we've got those prosperity shards, what we should be able to do is grab some of our Inferium Essence. And I believe we need to craft this like so with a vanilla seed in the middle of it. And by a vanilla seed, I mean a wheat seed, which hopefully uh, we should be able to get from here. We don't have the largest area of grass. Uh, and I did get rid of some of my grass uh, over here because this is where I've been growing all of my trees. But there we go. Once we've got one wheat seed, we can put that in the middle. And is that not how that works? I thought that was how you crafted it. Inferium seeds. What do I need? I first need to go to tier one. Uh, normal seed. Oh, I need eight inferium, not four. I see. So let me grab a couple more. Of oh, they're in my inventory, of course. Let me uh, lock this up. I'm okay. I'm okay with that being netherrack for the time being. We do need a space for the netherrack. And um, we don't have all that much in the way of this Inferium Essence. But now that we have the Inferium Seed, what we can do is, again, very quickly, I think for now I'm just going to dump a lot of this netherrack off the side because we don't really need it. Uh, I'm going to grab two sticks and quickly whip up a vanilla Minecraft hoe. Again, we should really make something like a mattock from Tinker's Construct, and we will do eventually because we're definitely going to need one. But for now, uh, just to get things started, we can throw down our Inferium Seed and using our watering can, we can get this to grow quite quickly. You'll see it's already at 14%. Uh, if we keep on going, it should hopefully grow up to 100% fairly quickly. Um, I'm not quite sure what the radius is of the new watering can. I think it's still 3x3, three three, um, although I could be wrong about that. And so eventually, uh, the most effective way to do this would be having a 3x3 three three area of the magical crops and then harvesting those. Uh, but hopefully, any second now, I was really hoping it wouldn't take like a full watering can to get this done. Thankfully, we are quite near our unlimited water source. And so refilling it doesn't take too, too long. But essentially, the idea here is that one day in a distant future, when we actually get this thing to fully grow. Oh my goodness, I thought this was significantly faster than it is. I don't know if right clicking it fast actually makes it work faster or not. I might have to test that in a single player world, but we're at 85%, we're very close to getting to 100%. Wow, this is using some, oh, there we go, it's done. Okay, so once we do that, we get one single piece of inferior essence, and so, the idea here is that we can use that Inferium Essence if we go back over to Certus Quartz Seeds, these ones right here. Um, we have to, first of all, craft up one of these Infusion Crystals. This can be made with four Inferium Essence, four Prosperity Shards, and one Diamond. Uh, I believe that is something that we can do right about now. Let us craft up one of those. Uh, this guy is going to allow us to turn our Inferium Essence into this stuff here, the Prudentium Essence. Um, and so for Inferium Essence and the Infusion Stone, which you can use a thousand times, uh, gets you the Prudentium Essence. I hope I'm pronouncing that somewhere close to correct. And then four of this Prudentium Essence with the same Infusion Crystal allows you to make the Intermedium Essence. And then we need four Intermedium Essence as well as one 
tier 3 crafting seed, which is made with 4 more intermediate essence, a tier 2 crafting seed, 4 prudent essence, and a tier 1 crafting seed, which is made with the base crafting seed and 4 inferior essence. The base crafting seed is made with a normal seed and 4 prosperity shards, which uh, we do have in our inventory. And so if I quickly do uh, something like this and try and get another wheat seed, we should be able to craft up that tier 1 seed, hopefully fairly quickly. Like so, and boom, get rid of that. And one, two, three, four. That's going to get us tier one. Uh, we do need two more of these to get tier two. I think we might have a couple of pieces left over in here. We don't. Um, I think the fastest way by far to get these might be to automate mob killing, um, especially for us right now, because the mobs is where we got all of our uh, Inferium Essence from. And so I think that does need to be something that we look towards working on next, automating our mob farm. Uh, but for now, well, let me see. We've completed a couple of quests here. Uh, let me claim a loot chest for that one. Let's claim that one. And did we complete another one, or was it just the quests like repeating themselves over and over again? I don't think we've completed... Any more quests, that is fine. Let's have a look, something good. A flask of magma skin gives you fire resistance for six minutes, or eight minutes even, not terrible. Uh, and then a greater ring of experience, which I think is just gonna pull experience towards us. Radius 12.5 blocks, internal experience zero. We can wear that for the time being. Um, we do have mystical fertilizer, uh, which does instantly grow uh, these crops, which is nice. It is quite expensive. You need four bone meal, four inferior essence, and one diamond to make it. Um, it wouldn't be too bad to use it on, for example, our Certus Quartz seeds once we get those, because once we've got these, by the way, we also then have to get, uh, what is it, 32 Certus Quartz seeds to get the four presses required. And so we are going to have to go through and do quite a bit of watering, uh, or more likely quite a bit of mystical fertilizering uh, to get the 32 Certus Quartz essence before we can actually make the presses and get into applied energistics. And so, guys, I think what we're going to have to do next is upgrade our mob spawn, because it's just not cutting it right now, uh, and we need a bunch more of this inferior essence and I don't know about you, but I do not want to have to spend uh, a good couple of hours just kind of continually picking up the water and then doing this with the watering can until we've got like a few stacks of Inferium seeds. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do for now is just alter the spawner we've got here a little bit. And to do that, I'm going to use uh, the mob fans for mob grinding utilities. These are fairly easy to make. Uh, it's four iron, one block of redstone, and then four of any slab you want. Uh, we'll probably go with cobblestone just because it's the easiest to make. And by default, uh, these can push mobs in like a one block radius, but they can push them five or six blocks away, if that makes sense. And so what I'm thinking here, guys, is I'm going to kill all the mobs in here. Uh, I'm going to kind of break this a bit, but I'm just going to make it deeper until it's about five blocks deep and at that point i'm then going to have fans at the back so that whenever a mob spawns in it gets automatically pushed to this side the side closest to us and on that side we can just throw down uh, some spikes from extra utilities too uh, these can be made really easily we'll make the cobblestone spikes with some cobblestone swords some normal cobblestone and some compressed cobblestone um, and so what i'm gonna do guys i'm gonna go away i'm gonna expand this out a little bit i'm gonna make some spikes i'm also gonna make some of these mob fans i'll be back in a second all right so quite a while later and I think I am ready with my new spawner. It's still not great. It still looks pretty bad, but I think it should work. So uh, what we've got over here is we've got eight mob fans that are five blocks or maybe six blocks, I think, away from these spikes. And so the idea here is uh, that as soon as we close this up, the mobs should start spawning in here like they did before, but this time we'll turn the fans on, they'll get pushed forward into the spikes. Uh, of course, we do have to close this up and put the spikes down, and we also still need to put down a couple of half slabs at the front so that we could darken the room enough whilst also seeing inside of it and also being able to pull through it because you'll notice that I've set up uh, another draw controller, some more storage drawers, as well as another advanced item collector to pick up everything that the mobs drop here. And so uh, let me quickly craft on up a couple of slabs in this handy little crafting table that we still have over here. Not quite sure why we didn't make that into a crafting station, but nevertheless, uh, this should begin if I don't break it, uh, to spawn mobs. That's still not right. Let me get rid of that. Uh, it should start to spawn mobs fairly quickly. We can press F7 to see if it is dark enough in there. It is indeed. Uh, I should probably also craft a few more torches uh, because I'm fairly certain that the top of that is not going to be lit up enough to stop the mobs from spawning. And so let me just do something like this. And then also uh, let us go ahead and craft up a couple of levers, preferably uh, with normal cobblestone as opposed to compressed cobblestone. It uh, looks like I'm picking this up fresh because I think my advanced item collector just picked up uh, all of the other stuff that we just dropped there. That's fine. 
And so, boom, and boom. That's going to get us eight levers, which should allow us to turn the spawner on. You can see already it is full of mobs. Uh, also, I'm going to kind of just fill in this bit right here to make it look symmetrical from the front, even though it's not. And then if we go around and turn all these fans on, we should begin to hear all the mobs being sent forward and getting pushed. And you can hear it already. The skeleton has been pushed into the spikes. The spikes should then kill them and all their drops should be placed uh, into the storage drawers. That is the plan. Uh, we might need more storage drawers. I'm not quite sure. We're definitely going to need um, to get ourselves our draw key back. I don't think we need cobblestone or this and i think i'm gonna have all of the loot bags in the smaller storage drawers the only reason why i use these larger ones at all is because we had them lying around i did also build this um an even number wide originally and so there's not a center point for the draw controller which does annoy me a little bit i might between episodes just change it to be one wider so that i can center the storage drawer in the middle of this uh, this bridge here uh, but that should work. Oh my goodness, there are so many Endermen. Uh, we don't have our Enderman charm on us. Let me quickly grab this and see if I can't uh, beat these guys. I would like to get maybe an Enderman head. Uh, so I'll use my Ender Sword. It does help that they don't fight back. It's very nice indeed. Didn't get an Enderman head. Also, I think I switched out to my other sword accidentally there at the end. Must have hit the mouse wheel. Uh, got two ender pearls. Not a bad, not a bad haul, but it could have been better. Um, and so yeah, over time between episodes, this is going to fill up with stuff. Uh, I'm going to kind of periodically move things to where I think they should be, try and organize them just a little bit uh, to make sure we've got space for everything. I might put in a few void upgrades or maybe even a few normal upgrades uh, to make sure that we can hold uh, everything and to make sure the system doesn't get backed up and we don't have things kind of just sitting on the floor causing lag. But you'll notice we've already got three of this Inferium Essence. And so hopefully by the time next episode rolls around, we might have a stack or two of inferior essence from our mob spawner um, which will be pretty cool indeed but for now guys i'm gonna go ahead and end today's episode but for now guys i'm gonna go ahead and end today's episode of project ozone light there as always if you did enjoy the video be sure to hit like it really does help out a lot leave a comment down below subscribe if you're new here and i will see you guys next time i didn't put the torches on top of the mob spawner and so they're spawning please don't kill me thank you very much let's just quickly light this up yeah there we go there we go.